Hello, this, uh, this video is all about river meanders and how they develop over time into oxbow lakes. You've got a brilliant photograph here from Canada. Um, you can see the river winding its way through a really broad, flat floodplain. Flood um, and for scale, you've got these trees, so you can see how immense that, that river actually is. A really big, um, really big river. On the inside of the bend, you can see sediments built up on every inside of the bend where the floor's a bit slower. Uh, those are called slip off slopes or river beaches and on the outside of the bend there you can see um, a really steep area there's shadow there um, that's a river cliff so the idea is to work out how these meanders develop into oxbow lakes right the way through this right the way through this lesson okay so we've got this brilliant video to show you uh, which is a red dye river experiment from Davidson Geology so you can check out their YouTube channel so you can see the water flowing through a meandering stream. Okay, and as you can see out here on the outer edge where it's deeper, that river's cutting into the bank and washing sediment away. And on the inside of the bend here where the water's a little bit uh, shallower, sediment's building up. So the river's basically moving this way and out this way and out this way. As you can see across here on the outer edge of the bend, as that water's thrown around, it's washing even more sediment out. And this meander here, uh, this meander next getting washed washed away and eroded. Okay, so you can expect processes like hydraulic action and abrasion to be occurring. And at a crucial point, the river will cut through a straighter path for itself and abandon this area here as an oxbow lake. So the way that that works, okay, in the top diagram there, water flows fastest on the outside of a slightly meandering stream so it's the outside bend where the water flows at its quickest and when we look at it like that uh, you can see the areas on the outside of the bend because the water is quickest are the erosion areas so you get hydraulic action occurring there the sheer force of the water um, abrasion where rocks are thrown into the banks and so on on the inside of the bend you can see the yellow areas um, those are the areas of deposition and then if we go from x to y you can see um, at X it's shallowest so there's more friction adding upon the water at that point it slows the water down and that encourages deposition of those beaches and then at Y it's deeper so there's less friction that's where we get our river cliff because of erosion over time those areas in between the outsides of the bends get closer and closer together through erosion and that's called a neck of land and then during a high energy event like a flood the river will cut through form a new straight channel for itself it abandons this area here as an oxbow lake and these areas infill uh, through uh, deposition of sediment uh, you'll get reeds and things like that growing in them um, and evaporation of water so the thing that's left over at the end that is your um, oxbow lake um, here's an animation of satellite images from the Amazon basin and there you can see a river that is constantly shifting across its floodplain constantly moving changing its course um, rivers aren't static things they're things that move over time and are very very dynamic so within your lesson okay there's a little uh, you can watch that video again uh, you should draw the diagrams on the on the next slide okay and include the cross-section diagram and then next to each diagram write a full explanation of how those meanders develop and turn into an oxbow lake so there's the copies of the diagrams that you could use and then for each one if you use the top diagram you'd start maybe with first you could mention the word meander okay um, and where the fastest and the slowest current are in the second diagram you could use the, uh, the connective second discuss what's going on the diagram with the erosion areas on the outside deposition on the inside use your cross-section diagram third and so on okay and then as a little review you can try and name the features on this photograph. Um, enjoy your geography.